Before I go look for whatever I'm looking for, I'll just have a peek at the succulent section. The selection is okay, but not as good as the one that I visited yesterday. So I found what I came here for. These are the T posts and they are 1.8 meters high. I might need to get a few of them. I might need another roll of shade cloth. So I'm getting one now. I've got everything I need, so it's time to go home. In the previous episode, you've seen me create a shade structure for my area of neglect, which is basically a small strip right, right next to the fence. But the next area I'm working on would be next to this alfresco, and it's a, it's a bigger area. And I'm thinking of attaching against, attaching, attaching one end of the, the cloth on, on the alfresco. So this means that I would probably need some hooks. And other than that, I would also need to determine which direction the cloth would be laying. So maybe something in that direction. And I'll definitely not be covering all of them because I don't need to. I just need to protect them against the harmful overhead, overhead exposure. Because in summer, it can be quite hot. I just need to filter the light a bit. I don't need to completely block them. And one of the first things I have to think about is where I would be attaching the hooks. And I need to mark down where I'm going to put in the metal spikes. So once I've done that, I'll have to secure the cloth against the spikes and the hooks. And that way I would have my shade structure. So let's get right to it. So we're looking at the alfresco. I'm sitting somewhere in the north and I'm looking southwards. So one of the first things I have to do is to attach some hooks onto the metal beams. This way I would have the most amount of support from the, the whole structure, from the whole alfresco. And this means that the wind would not be able to pull it out as easy. I figured the three hooks would be enough support. As I was originally thinking of adding four, but that's, that's a lot of nuts to tie. 
So I'm going to go with three and we'll see how it goes. Hopefully it withstands the summer winds. The next item in the agenda is to mark out where I'm going to affix the metal spikes, the metal posts. And for that, I will need to do a bit of measurement. According to the packaging, the, the cloth that I bought is 1.83 meters in, in width. So what I'm going to do is to mark out 1.8 meters from, from one end to the other. This would be the basis of my shade. I'm thinking of attaching the metal post behind the black pots and right next to our water heater. So as you can see, there's a little space among them behind the pots and right next to the blue chalk sticks. I'm going to mark out the area that I'm going to use and I'll measure and I'll take a measurement of 1.8 meters from there. So I'm using one of my plant labels to mark out the area where I'm going to affix the metal stake in. So I'm going to go do that now. The next step is to measure 1.8 meters away from the first marker. Having done my markers, I'm going to create holes now, holes for pilot holes for the metal sticks. That way it would be easier for me to drive them in the ground. And now that I've got the hole, it's time to hammer in the metal stakes. So I'm done with the first post and it's time to work on the next. Both posts are on the ground now and all I need to do is to attach the shade cloth to them. I'll have to work on this ones first because it's going to be a lot harder to attach to the higher part. So I'm going to prepare the hooks and going to attach some cord on them because I won't be attaching the cloth directly on the hooks. I would need some slack. Some slack on the hooks would be perfect. So as you can see, it stretches quite long. And from the looks of things, I have the option of using the entirety of the roll if I want to. And I would still be going over the area. But based on my markers, I'm not going to... I don't have to use the whole thing. So I'll just trim it after I figure out how long I would need. So how do I start this? From my point of view, what I would need to do is to start at this end and tie it over here. I would need to start with the far side, the side that's nearer to the house. And that's before I work on the outer, the outer hook. So I'll get the two attachments ready and by then I'll figure out if I need more or if I need to trim the, the shade cloth. And right now I'm betting on needing to trim. 
before I can use this, I believe I will need to reinforce the edges. And to do that, I'll be folding a bit of the, the edge and making a loop out of my cord. So by folding them in half, I'm having two layers, two ply of the cloth. And this would be giving more resistance to the rope. And that way they won't be tearing apart when the wind gets stronger. The weather's crazy, it's raining right now. Yesterday, I reinforced the hem of the shade cloth by creating a straight stitch across the edge. And now that they're reinforced, I'm going to tie them to the hooks. So I think I got the right amount of slack now. So as you can see, the fabric isn't drooping too low. And this is particularly important because too much droop means that there's lots of the fabric for the wind to work on. And more fabric blowing against the wind means that there's much more resistance. And the winds in Melbourne can be very crazy. So, so what I'm going to do next is to double check on my knots and actually get to tie down the, the metal stakes because right now I've just have I just have them held by friction. I might need to reduce a bit more of the slack, the droop and yes I would need I would also need to cut the extra fabric on the left side. But other than that I'm pretty much all set.
And just like that, we're done. And now that we have the shade, I can move more of my plants out here since they would be protected by the shade cover anyway. And that way, I can increase the sun exposure without having them burn. This is good timing that I have this now. I think it turned out really well. You could see the light shadow where the shade cloth is hanging over. So you know that the plants underneath are still getting enough light. But at the same time, most of the UV light is being blocked and there would be a reduced chance of burning. There's a small part of me thinking about doing this side. But I'm not sure if I should go for it because it's such a tiny spot. We'll see. I do have that small strip of the cloth that I cut, the excess from this one. So maybe I could do it if I want to. I just have to figure out if I need to add another, another stake here. I still have a couple here, I think. Yes, I still have two stakes. So, maybe I'll go for it. I wonder if there's enough space. But I think I'll just hold the cloth over it and see if I have enough of the cloth. Looks like I accidentally uprooted one of the elegants, so I'm going to set it back. And now we're done! This time for real! I've got an L-shaped shade now, which is the same sh about the same shape as Project Lux. So I guess we're covered. I like it. It took me a few hours, maybe less if I knew what I was doing. And that was in a span of two days because I got interrupted by the rain. But in any case, this is a quick job. And, but I'm such an amateur, so it took me a bit longer than it should. If you're going to attempt something like this, you must be mindful of the, the position that you're putting them in. If you're doing them against the fence, you would need to know how much light you're further reducing it by, by covering it overhead. So if your wall is west facing, which means the wall is, the fence is at the east side and the west is uncovered, then that means that 
in the first place, there's no morning sun, there's no morning light. It's going to be exposed to the overhead and afternoon sun. And the reverse is the same. If it's an east-facing wall, so the fence would be in the west, the east would be uncovered. And if you're going to cover the top, this means that only the direct morning sunlight would be available to, their, to your plants. So in, in all of those cases, it would be very important that you grab the lightest shade cloth that you can find. So I found a, a white colored shade cloth. And this blocks about 50 to 60% of UV, which is good. So basically, I'm having the, the power of the UV rays. Because right now, it feels pretty much like summer already. We're, well, we're, we're pretty close to summer. We're ending our spring soon. And summer in, down here in Australia starts in December. So by cutting the power down in half, this means that the, the plants would be able to withstand direct overhead sun. And by keeping the, if, if you would remember how I did it, um, I didn't, I, I had the, the shade structure quite tall, quite high. This means that there's still going to be some sun at an angle. Because I, I don't want to completely remove sunlight. I still need them to get as much sunlight as they can. But I only want to protect them from the harsh overhead sun. Because it's usually midday when it's the, the warmest. So the morning and the afternoons would be less hot, less warm than the midday. And I would like the plants to still enjoy direct, direct sunlight. Again, going back to the position, it depends on how much, how much sunlight they're already getting right now. If they're not getting too much and you further, if, if you use a dark shade cloth or a very thick shade cloth, then you're cutting, out, you're cutting off much of the sunlight that they, they're getting daily. This means that they're going to etiolate. That defeats the purpose of adding shade cloth because it's basically, if you're going to do it that way, you may as well just move them towards the eaves or somewhere shaded. But yes, personally, I would definitely recommend getting the lightest shade cloth that you can get. That way, they would still get some light, even overhead, only at half the power. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe if you haven't yet. Subscribing means that you're, you're going to get notified when I put out new videos. If you're after photos, you might want to check out my Facebook or Instagram or both. I would usually post photo content there. I also recently started a Twitter. This way, there's somewhere you can follow me to know if I have any announcements or changes to my, any changes or schedules or something like that. You might know it from Facebook or Twitter first. Unless you, you've subscribed to me, then you would get a notification from YouTube anyway. I usually come up with a video once every three days. I'm not sure if the holidays would affect that in any way. Because as you know, I've been sick for the past few weeks. So right now, I'm, I'm recording. I'm catching up at a higher pace. I'm recording lots of videos right now. So maybe there might not be changes to my frequency, but we'll see. So stay tuned to my Facebook or Twitter just to know if I would make any changes to the schedules. But otherwise, if you hear nothing about it, then it's safe to assume that I'm going to keep the current schedule of one video every three days. So that said, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.